Naming assets uh, can be a little tricky because they're kind of three separate types of assets and usually you don't get to spend as much time on. A binary asset is just really simple. It just it means hydrogen and one other element. So if we're looking at something like HCl or HBr, and it can be multiples of those things. So H2S would be considered a binary acid because there's only two elements. In the event that you have a binary acid, what you're going to do is you're going to write down the prefix hydro, and you're going to put a stem from the anion followed by ic acid. Okay. So the way that looks like executed fully would be hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydrosulfuric acid. So anytime you just have hydrogen and one other element, that is how you go through and do that. Now the other way to figure this out for a binary acid is anything that ends in IDE for the anion is going to follow this naming system. So even if you have something like HCN, which is not a binary acid, but because this is a cyanide polyatomic ion, this would be hydrocyanic acid. Okay. On the flip side, if you have ternary acids, this is when you're going to have your polyatomic ions. So now you're going to see things like H2SO4, H2SO3, you're going to see H3PO4, things of that nature. Now there are two things that happen in ternary acids. Okay, so if your polyatomic ion ends in ATE, so here you can see phosphate, sulfate, sulfite, and that's going to come out differently than if it ends in ITE. So if you end in ATE, what you're going to do is you're going to take the stem from the polyatomic ion followed by ic acid. And if it ends in ITE, you're going to take the stem from the polyatomic ion followed by us acid. So sulfate will become sulfuric acid. And phosphate will become phosphoric acid. Okay, um, if we were to do a couple more, uh, H2CO3, so we have carbonate will become carbonic acid. Now, for the other, if we're looking at h 2 SO3, then we're looking at sulfite, so we would change sulfite to sulfurous acid. If we had HNO2, we have nitrite, that would become nitrous acid. And so the first thing you need to do when you see that you have an acid is you need to go through, do I have a binary acid or do I have a ternary acid? If you have a ternary, you need to look at the ending of the polyatomic ion if it ends in 8, then you're going to be going ic acid. If it ends in ite, you're going to be going in us acid. And if it ends in ide, you're actually going to use the binary acid naming process. So hydrocyanic acid. To complicate that further, there is also a fourth category where we have organic acids. So a carboxylic acid. So if you've ever seen acetic acid, it's not the official name, but if you have seen HC2, H3O2, you might have also seen that written in a different form as CH3COOH, which Lewis structure-wise would look like this. And so that has an entirely different set of naming process and it has a common name. And so if you're getting into those, you're probably at this point just looking at memorizing those. Um, this would be acetic acid would be its common name. And that comes after the acetate ion, uh, but the actual formal name, the IUPAC name for this would be ethanoic acid. And so if you're seeing uh, carboxylic acids, you're probably just going to have to do a couple of them, uh, maybe propanoic or, or butanoic or whatever prefixes you'd be familiar with from organic.